the Libya war has been going on for 10 years, and uh, for most of it, it almost seemed that the country was uh, bound to, to, to divide. It was, and then there was an informal boundary between East and, and Western Libya, and there seemed to be irreconcilable sort of viewpoints between the, act, the, the, the political and the military actors uh, on both sides. You know, I felt that this uh, divide had to be bridged. It wasn't always easy to maintain a presence on the ground and to have access to all sides. Remember, since 2014, most embassies were working from abroad. The main airports of the country were closed. Traveling by land across the country was difficult. Of course, I've been involved in the Libya file and following Libya closely, even before the fall of Gaddafi in 2011. So I had a lot of contacts of people who trusted me, without whom it wouldn't have been possible for a you know, young Western female analyst to, to travel at ease. Being on the field and having access to the people was key in also shaping my understanding of what Libya needed. And it allowed me to pick up developments on the ground if you want. I mean, throughout these various iterations of war that we've seen in Libya all over these years, of course there have always been, and there still are, those that advocate for complete victory. As crisis group, we advocate for talking uh, to all sides, and we immediately, starting 2015, realized that trying to forge an agreement just through the political actors in Libya was not going to work. So for this reason, we were always advocating and continue to advocate for a financial negotiation track, a military negotiation track, and a political negotiation track. So this, coupled with the, the fact that I had very in-depth knowledge of the country, I think is the reason why the, the UN asked me to, to join the UN support mission in Libya in 2017, where I flanked the then envoy, Rassan Salam, as his political advisor. And eventually this led to the establishment of a UN office in Benghazi. And for the first time, the UN really went around the country and, and the envoy started meeting Libyans from the most remote uh, destinations. My presence there, I think, also uh, helped convey this notion of the need of a multi-track approach to a resolution of the conflict in Libya. Of course, there wasn't a linear progress in that direction, and we had a relapse of conflict in 2019. But I think where we had an impact was when international backers realized that their military support to the Libyan faction was bearing no fruit. It was in that, op that, that moment where we actually um, had an impact in charting the way for this multi-track approach to negotiations. It bore fruit. In March 2021, we saw a unity government come to power. It was the first time in over eight years that the country is under one government. Of course, it's a very fragile piece and there needs to be continuous uh, monitoring. And we'll be there monitoring and ringing the alarm bells when, uh, when needed. <laughs>